All negotiations are similar in that they involve people taking initial positions, offering proposals, counter-proposals, and concessions until finally coming to an agreement. The two main ways of looking at negotiation are distributive, win-lose, and integrative, win-win. Distributive bargaining emphasizes individual gains. Resources are viewed as limited and everyone wants to claim their share of the pie. Distributive bargainers tend to avoid sharing or misrepresent information and view other parties as the enemy to be defeated. Integrative bargaining emphasizes joint gains. By engaging in cooperative problem solving, the goal of integrative bargaining is to expand the pie so there's more for everyone. Integrative bargainers tend to share information openly and view other parties as a partner or teammate. In all integrative negotiations, it's important to keep in mind the following tips of principled negotiation. Separate the people from the problem. It is possible to be soft on the people, but still hard on the problem, even if you perceive the people as the reason for the problem. Focus on interests, not positions. Sometimes people take positions that don't reflect their real interests. Focus on the reasons why people want what they're asking for. Positions are changeable. Invent options for mutual gain. In any given scenario, there is more than one solution. Make sure you are brainstorming to think of every possible solution that could get you to a resolution. Use objective criteria. Rather than making negotiations a contest of will, concentrate on using a standard, agreed-upon measure of success that everyone can work toward. When several people or organizations are involved in a negotiation, it becomes a complex interaction that requires serious consideration and a range of approaches recognizing this complexity, which is what this next section is all about. Multi-stakeholder dialogue. Stakeholding is a process by which people or organizations are actively involved in the design, delivery, review, and improvement of products and services. Stakeholder dialogue involves all interest groups with a concern in a two-way communication process. It focuses on increasing understanding and relations among stakeholders, and it's generative. It discourages blaming for the past and focuses on creating a shared future. The following four factors affect the quality of a stakeholder dialogue. Commitment. Key people and resources must give top priority to the issue at the heart of the dialogue. Capacity. Physical, organizational, and human resources must be available to participate. Consensus. The goal must be a solution where everyone wins. Consciousness. Dialogue must be weaved into the system rather than something extraneous to the organization. Different stakeholders require different strategies to manage them. The supportive stakeholder. This is the ideal stakeholder who supports organizational goals and actions. Try to involve them to maximize their cooperative potential. The marginal stakeholder. Neither highly threatening nor cooperative, they're generally not concerned, though they may have certain hot-button issues. Monitor them and get them involved when issues relate to them. The non-supportive stakeholder. These people have a high threat potential and are low on cooperation. Defend against them by reducing their interest in the organization or issue. The mixed blessing stakeholder. They have potential to threaten or cooperate. Manage them with collaboration that seeks to maximize stakeholder cooperation. For effective multi-stakeholder involvement, engage frequently and systematically. Remember that communication must be two-way and create channels for communicating with all stakeholders.